Hello, my dear students. I'm Dr. Vaishali Bharande. I've been teaching anatomy for more than 25 years and I love it. Today, I'm starting my series on parotid gland. Okay. So, we are going to have two lectures on parotid gland. In the first part, I'm going to talk about the cross anatomy of it. Okay, and some related applied. In the second one, I will revise the gross anatomy a little bit and then I will take you through the blood supply, nerve supply and so on. I request all of you to watch both the videos. Okay, don't think that one is going to be enough knowledge for you. You need to see both. And I could have made a single lecture, but I don't want to. Usually, I believe 20 to 22 minutes is what you should watch. And then allow that matter to, you know, kind of process in your brain and then take on the next 20 minutes. Alright. So, let's begin. Parotid gland part 1. Gross anatomy with applied anatomy. Right. As usual, I always request my students to sit for these classes with color pencils, drawing books or any digital drawing implement that you prefer. But when I ask you to draw, I expect you to draw. Not because I get any pleasure out of it, but the fact is that if you're using both sides of your brain, okay, for drawing, uh, you'll end up learning a lot more, your understanding is much better, and therefore your recall is better. Those who are interested in this aspect, just check out an article on this uh, written by me on LinkedIn. Maybe you will get an idea of how drawings help you in memorization, understanding, and finally recall. Alright, so let's begin this class now by solving this MCQ. Cialography is the radiological examination of the following gland. Obviously, the answer is salivary gland. But would you have known this answer if this was not a lecture on a salivary gland? That is my question. What are the other questions commonly asked? They can ask you gross anatomy of parotid gland, contents of parotid gland, secretomotor nerve supply of parotid gland. For attempting these questions or solving an MCQ, okay, you need to have knowledge. Okay? So let's build you this base of knowledge which will help you to solve these questions. Let's begin. What is parotid region? See, understand that your parotid gland is not really having a specific shape. It's a salivary gland that has expanded into a region which is your parotid region. Let's define the parotid region. Okay, so parotid region is above limited by the external acoustic meatus and the temporomandibular joint. Below it's limited by the stylohyoid muscle and the posterior belly of digastic. I hope you can see them through the parotid gland. This is a transverse section here. The parotid region is anteriorly limited by a sandwich. How interesting is that? Okay, so what sandwich am I talking about? It's the mandible sandwiched between two muscles, between the masseter on the outside and medial pterygoid on the inside. Posteriorly, it's limited by another sandwich. The mastoid process covered by the sternocleidomastoid on the outside, posterior belly of digastic on the inside. Further, medially, the region is limited by the styloid process and the muscles attached to it. So approximately here is your parotid region in which your parotid gland expands, all right? So let's talk about the parotid gland itself now. It's the largest salivary gland, serous by nature, weighing about 25 gram, ectodermal in origin. It's like an inverted pyramid, okay? Don't forget this. This is a very important aspect of parotid gland. It's shaped like an inverted pyramid and situated just below your external acoustic meatus. Okay, right. So we are going to study the parotid gland as follows. Parotid gland, its coverings, parts, contents. Okay, then what are the parotid processes? Some extensions of parotid. What is parotid duct? Blood supply, nerve supply, lymphatic drainage, applied anatomy. This is what gets covered under parotid gland. If you take a screenshot of this, it will help you in revising the topic later. So let's talk about the coverings first. The parotid gland, as you can see, is covered by is covered by a true fascia or a true capsule. The true capsule is actually the condensation of the parotid gland itself. Okay, it's parenchyma. 
Outside that, it's covered by a false capsule, which is created by the investing layer of deep cervical fascia, which comes to the gland, as you can see, splitting to enclose the gland. It's, it gives rise to a superficial layer and a deep layer. The superficial layer goes up to get attached to zygomatic arch. This layer is called as parotidomacetric fascia. This is especially thick and unyielding fascia. What is applied importance? When you have what is called parotitis, okay, it does not allow the gland to expand because the fascia is very tight and unyielding. So what happens? A lot of pain is experienced by the patient in parotitis. On a deeper plane, you can see how it goes on to get attached to the styloid process, thickening in the middle to form the stylomandibular ligament. Okay, so this is what the stylomandibular ligament looks like going from styloid process to the angle of mandible, separating your parotid gland from your submandibular gland. Okay, always remember that the, the layer on the deeper side is, is more flimsy compared to the superficial layer and therefore Whenever there is a parotid growth, it tends to spread out on the deeper side, okay, because this layer is much weaker, right. So now let's talk about the presenting parts of parotid gland. Understand that it has an apex and a base. It has three surfaces and three borders, okay. Let's take a look. This pointed lower end of the parotid gland is called as the apex. This broad base on the top is called as the base. The more about this will be discussed later. Okay, now let's draw to understand. Before we get into surfaces and borders, let's draw to understand these and then we'll take it from there. Okay, so please take your color pencils, dear students, and let's begin a diagram. Students, let's begin drawing the parotid gland. Now we're going to draw a transverse section through the parotid gland. Please ensure that your transverse section looks somewhat triangular, okay? Anterior to this here, the parotid gland is related to the mandible, which on the outside gives attachment to the masseter and on the inside gives attachment to medial pterichoid muscle. Posteriorly, it's related to the mastoid process, which on the outside gives attachment to sternocleidomastoid and on the inside to the posterior belly of digastric. Here, it's related to the uh, styloid process, giving attachment to styloglossus, stylohyoid, and stylopharyngeus. Further medially, you come across the beautiful carotid sheath containing the internal carotid artery, the internal jugular vein, along with 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th cranial nerves. Further medially, you come across the wall of pharynx. The parotid gland is separated from the surface by skin and by underlying superficial fascia. Now color up your diagram and enjoy the process. All right, students, using this image now, we are going to understand the surfaces and borders. This border, which is directed towards the mandible, is the anterior border. This one directed towards the mastoid process is the posterior. And this one, which is directed towards the wall of pharynx, is the medial border. Between the anterior and the medial is the anteromedial surface. Between the posterior and the medial is the posteromedial surface. And towards the skin is the superficial surface. Now it's up to you students to further draw by adding the contents. Here you are seeing the facial nerve entering into the gland, passing through it and emerging outwards. Deep to that lies your retromandibular vein. Deep to that lies your external carotid artery. Color them up and complete the diagram. Having drawn this diagram, it will help you a lot to understand the rest of the anatomy of parotid gland. All right, students. Having understood this, let's come back to the topic, surfaces and borders. Here is your anterior border directed towards the mandible. Here is your posterior border directed towards the mastoid process. And here is the medial border directed towards the wall of pharynx. Now, between the anterior and the medial 
between the anterior and the posterior border facing the skin is your superficial surface. Between the anterior and the medial is your anteromedial surface. Between your medial and posterior is your posteromedial surface. So three surfaces, three borders. I hope you've got this clear. Let's now begin a discussion on each of these aspects. Okay. So let's talk about the apex and base. Okay. So here you are seeing the apex and you are seeing three structures emerging from it. What are the three structures? This is the cervical branch of facial nerve. And these two are the anterior and posterior divisions of retromandibular vein. More about this we will discuss subsequently. So from the lower end of your parotid gland from the apex, you have three structures emerging. Cervical branch of facial nerve, anterior and posterior divisions of retromandibular vein. Let's now go to the top which is the base. Again the base is having three structures emerging from it known by the mnemonic SAT. S for superficial temporal vessels, A for auriculotemporal nerve and T for temporal branch of facial. So three structures from below, three structures from the base, apex and base. Apex is directed downwards, almost entering into the carotid triangle. The base is directed upwards, abutting the external acoustic meatus and temporomandibular joint. Just remember that it's because the gland is so close to your temporomandibular joint. If the gland is inflamed, there is often a lot of pain during chewing or mastication. That's because it's come so close to the gland, to the joint, that the joint elicits pain. Right. Now we go on to the superficial surface. We've done the apex and base. We've seen structures emerging from them. Let's talk about the superficial surface now. This is the surface related to skin, superficial fascia, the, great, the branches of the great auricular nerve, few, the parotidomastic fascia and a couple of lymph nodes which are present on the superficial surface of the gland. Since we have discussed the parotidomastic fascia, let's recall it in your mind and let's move on. So, that is about the superficial surface. Let's talk about the anteromedial surface that is here. The anteromedial surface, let's come back to the concept of sandwich. You recall I told you it is related anteriorly to the sandwich of mandible. Who is causing the sandwich? On the outside, it's caused by the masseter. On the inside, it's caused by the medial pterygoid with the mandible in between. That is the anteromedial surface. Emerging from it anteriorly is the facial nerve and on the deeper side is the maxillary artery branch of terminal branch of external carotid artery. Revise this in your mind. Right. Let's come to the posteromedial surface here between the medial border and the posterior border. Here you are seeing the its relation to the sandwich posteriorly with sandwich sternocleidomastoid on the outside, posterior belly of digastric on the inside and who is lying in between? The mastoid process is lying in between. Okay. Also present here is the facial nerve which enters into the gland from posterior. Also present here is the styloid process and muscles attached to it which are styloglossus, stylohyoid, stylopharyngeus and carotid sheath with its content of internal carotid artery, internal jugular vein and 9, 10, 11, 12 cranial nerves. Okay. So we have done the superficial surface, anteromedial surface and posteromedial surface. Surfaces are done. Let's talk about the borders now. It has an anterior border which you can see is resting on which muscle? Can you recognize the muscle students? Yes, it's the masseter muscle. So the anterior border is seen resting on the masseter and a number of structures are emerging from it. I hope you may recall this diagram from the apex three structures from the from the apex three structures from the base three structures, right? Now from the anterior border there are a lot of structures. Let's see how to identify. This is the zygomatic branch of facial. This is the transverse facial vessels branch of superficial temporal vessels. This is upper buccal branch, accessory parotid, 
the rotted duct lower buccal so remember above the duct and below the duct there is upper buccal and lower buccal and in between them there is a parotid duct okay below lower buccal is the marginal mandibular nerve so these are all structures which are emerging from the anterior border of the parotid gland let's talk about the posterior border which is abutting the sternocleidomastoid emerging from here is your posterior auricular vessels and posterior auricular nerve okay right so we have done we have done the anterior border we have done the posterior border let's talk about the medial border which is present here the medial border is the medial border is related to the wall of pharynx and sometimes called as the pharyngeal border it goes right deep between the structures to go almost close to the wall of pharynx right so let's now talk about the contents of parotid gland okay so here are the contents let's enumerate them then we'll discuss them the parotid gland contains the facial nerve and its branches as they pass through the gland from posterior to anterior retromandibular vein just deep to it external carotid artery further deep to it a few lymph nodes parotid lymph nodes and auriculotemporal nerve these are five contents of the parotid gland let's discuss each of these now okay so let's talk about the facial nerve i have reduced that facial nerve to a very simplistic diagram this is your facial nerve piercing the posterior wall of parotid uh, gland dividing into five branches okay which are the temporal branch of facial sagmatic branch of facial upper and lower buccal branches of facial finally forming the buccal nerve marginal mandibular nerve and the central branch of cervical branch of facial nerve okay so these are all the branches of facial nerve basically five branches are given off okay what are they use your hands please put your hand on the side of your face what are the five branches temporal branch zygomatic branch buccal branch marginal mandibular branch and the cervical branch of facial remember the buccal will divide into an upper buccal and a lower buccal branch okay why is there a goose's foot here madam what are you doing this is not zoology isn't it yes it's because this hand this division of facial nerve has been compared to the foot of a goose and hence the name pes and serenus this image is called as pes and serenus that is why the foot of the goose let's talk about something called hilton's method which is an applied anatomy okay now just imagine that you need to operate on parotid gland would you make a vertical incision or would you make a horizontal incision let me make a vertical incision okay what has happened when i made this all the branches of my facial nerve got cut patient came back with facial paralysis right but if i used a method by which i am making my incisions between the facial nerves and draining the gland this will protect the gland while and drain it while preserving the facial nerve itself okay so just remember that besides this there is a pain of parotitis is also because the facial nerve is very superficially placed and gets compressed during the process causing pain what is patty's fasciovenous plane you recall i told you the facial nerve enters into the gland from posteriorly passing through the gland emerging anteriorly it's dividing your gland into superficial and deep parts the plane through which it, it passes is called patty's fasciovenous plane okay now this is a this is the this is important because when you are doing surgical removal of parotid gland it must be do, done in two parts one part deep to the parotid deep to the facial nerve one part superficial to the facial nerve preserving your facial nerve question why do you want to preserve your facial nerve yes obviously you want to preserve because if it got cut during the drainage or any manipulation of parotid gland you would have patient coming to you with facial paralysis let's come to the next content the retromandibular vein 
which is formed by union of superficial temporal with the maxillary vein forming the retromandibular vein which finally divides into an anterior and posterior divisions of retromandibular vein close to the apex of the gland. Here the anterior division meets with the facial vein to form common facial vein while posterior division might meet with the posterior auricular vein to form the external jacular vein. So that completes the retromandibular vein. Let's go to the deepest structure which is the external carotid artery. This artery enters into the gland from below through the carotid triangle and finally it divides into a superficial temporal artery and the maxillary artery which are the ter terminal branches of, of the external carotid artery. Sometimes the external carotid might give an additional nerve which is the posterior auricular nerve within the parotid gland. Most of the time this nerve is given off proximal to the parotid gland. Now, what are the what are parotid lymph nodes? What do they drain? Again, use the lines to understand. Here you are seeing the parotid lymph nodes. They drain a part of the face, a part of the eyelid, a part of the scalp, mid layer, and parotid gland itself. Okay, so those are the, these are present in the form of superficial and deep parotid lymph nodes. Present just above and deep to the gland is the auriculotemporal nerve which is ascending into the temple region by passing through the uh, parotid gland. So that completes the contents of parotid gland. Let's revise. Here you saw the facial nerve passing forward through the parotid gland uh, to finally emerge at the anterior border and divide into five branches. Here you are seeing the retromandibular vein. You can explain the formation and division of retromandibular here you are seeing the external carotid, carotid has divided into its terminal branches, superficial, temporal and maxillary. You may find a few parotid lymph nodes and auriculotemporal nerve. Okay. So now, what have we covered up till now? Okay. What we have covered are coverings. Remember true and false capsule? Then we covered parts, apex, base, three surfaces, three borders. Then we talked about the content and enumerated each of the contents. What will we cover next? In the next lecture, we'll be talking about parotid processes, parotid duct, blood supply, nerve supply, lymphatic drainage, and the blood anatomy. So let's see if you can solve this MCQ. Which structure lies deepest within the parotid gland? I'm not going to answer this. I'm sure you can. A patient has come with deep laceration on the face in the region of parotid gland, which structure is most likely damaged? Again, the answer is pretty obvious. Try and solve and if you have problems, connect with me through the comment section. So now students, a very interesting slide. Without saliva and sweat, there are no tears of success. This is an amazingly histological quote, isn't it? Can you tell me why I am calling it a histological quote? Please think about it. Get back to me. I loved this slide. I loved taking this lecture too for all of you. Please get, ba get back to me if you have any doubts regarding this. I would love to see you for Parotid Gland 2 in my next lecture. All right. All the best students. Thank you so much.